Good afternoon, Lost Creek Baptist Church family. It is a great day to be in the house of the Lord and to those that will be listening to this broadcast at a later day. Thank Pastor RV for this opportunity. And he's in the house this afternoon. Bless God for our pastor. Amen. God bless him for this great opportunity. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, bless God for a beautiful lesson that we have uh, this afternoon, which is already have blessed me, and I hope that it will be a blessing to you. Uh, continuing to study the, um, the 10 steps to spiritual renewal, and we done had the, the power of the word, we done had the power of obedience, and today we are gonna have the power of repentance. Oh my God, that is a powerful word, amen. And we going deep today, we going really deep today. Uh, I, I implore you to read Nehemiah the ninth chapter, that whole chapter, amen, to get uh, a deeper understanding of what is happening in our text, amen. And, but we own uh, repentance, and I was reading in the book, and Dr. Jeremiah said he thought his life was just going so good, Pastor RV, but he thought about some grudges that he still had inside of him, and he'd been studying the Word of God, he'd been reading the Word of God, but something still was tugging him in the inside of him that he need to get rid of, and that where takes us into this, the definition of repentance. The short biblical definition of repentance is a change of mind. And a change of mind that results in a change of your action. Oh, my, this is deep, this is deep, this is hitting me hard, really, today. Repentance involves recognize that you have a thought wrongly in the past. But you're determined to get it right. That's what it means. You're determined to think right in the future. And this third reset of repentance, which includes a healthy, listen to me, healthy, godly sorrow or desire. I heard someone say that earlier before we got started. That word desire for changes that you have strayed away from God with the, for your will of your life. This, listen, let me say that again. A desire for a what? Change. After having strayed away from God for the will of your life. When we get back in the word, we begin to study, obey the truth. When we get back in the word, we begin to obey the truth. It starts with a change of mind. That's why I like what Apostle Paul said, having a mind of Christ. He said that it will start to change our minds and our lives in a deeper, more profound ways. God begins to, oh my God, God begins to put out, point out some things in our lives that he wants to change. He shows us the big word. That big word is sin that keeps us from pleasing God. God hates sin. And what does sin does to us? It separates us from God. That's what it does. And he began to point some things in our lives so that he can do what? Change us. That's why I love that song, Sister Wynn sang the other Sunday ago, Change Me, O Lord. Hallelujah. As we look at Nehemiah chapter 9, verses 1 through 3, it said, Now in the 20 and 4 days of this month, the children of Israel were assembled with fasting and with sackcloth and of earth upon them. Verse 2 says, and the seed of Israel separated themselves from all strangers, foreigners, and stood and confessed their sins and iniquities of their fathers. Verse 3 said, this is it, this is it right here. And they stood up in their place, come on, and read in the book of the law of the Lord thou God one full part of the day. And another fourth part, they come what? Confess 
and worship the Lord thy God. There it is. There it is. There it is. The people gathered and they confess as a part of worship. They stood, look how they did. They stood and they cried with a loud voice unto the Lord God, revealing a deep-seated change of their heart. There that word, change of the heart that has come apart of them through their exposure to the what? The word of God. Experiencing God's truth has led to a deeper understanding of their what? Transgression. Charles Spurgeon, the Thogian, says this, when he is forgiven, he repents of what? Sin more than ever, for he sees more clearly than what? Ever. The wickedness, oh my God, of offending so gracious a God. The people knew they had fallen short past the RV of God's plan for them. Oh my God. When you walk around here and don't feel sorry for what you have done, you in trouble. Look what happened. They repented, come on, in a spirit of what? Brokenness. I love that word. The people confessed their sins. They repented in a spirit of what? Brokenness. Another word for brokenness is humility. Hallelujah. You got to be broken for all of God to what? Use you. We can't come to him high and mighty. Amen. Amen. Look what happened and they repented in a spirit of broken. They began to feast. They turned the feasting into what? Fasting. Oh my God. There was great days of great joy. They became days of what? Great brokenness. They cried out to God for what? For forgiveness. With a death, with a desperate of what? Sorrow. My God. Have we lost that sorrow today in our churches? Have we enjoyed the feast of God? Blessing, look what happened. And neglect the next spiritual step in our spiritual growth. How we could come so, look what they say, how we become so sophisticated and enlightened and proud to know there's a time for tears and sorrow for what? Our sins. How we brought our culture saying that anything we do wrong is probably somebody else's fault. What Chip Wilson say, I think he said the devil made me do it. That's what we do. We put it all on, death, on the devil. But we should be accountable. God holds us up accountable. When we hear in the house of God, when we listen to the word of God, when you study the word of God, and you still going the wrong way, doing the same thing, amen. Who can you blame but yourself? We need to take responsibility of our sins, amen. When we learn, come on, when we learn how we read God's word is the seed of true what? Revival and what? Confession. They say confession is good for the soul. Amen. Ah, oh, when we confess our soul in what? Souls that are watered by what? Tears of what? Brokenness and our what? Remorse. The Bible says we have sinned against God. We need to break our hearts. Amen. We need to be broken. Amen. There should be some tears shed when I done messed up, when I done lied. Amen. When I done stole something that don't belong to me. There should be a true repentance in our souls. The people cried. The people cried with a loud voice unto the Lord. They fast in sackcloth and ashes. They confessed on their own what? Sins and iniquity of their what? Fathers. Let me bring it up. In David, Lord Jesus, in his pain, 
the power of, of prayer of what? Repentance. It teaches that the brokenhearted honestly, only, honestly experience a spiritually reset. Can I go what David said? Creating me a clean heart, oh God. Renewing me a right spirit within me. Then he said, cast me not away from their what? Present. Take not their Holy Spirit from me. Come on. Verse 12 says, restore to me the joy of my salvation. Uphold me with thy free spirit. That's the King David. That's, that's David. Amen. D David, David, after God's own heart. Amen. The apple of God's heart. But he fell. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He fell. We all fall. Amen. We fall. But he's telling, Dr. Jeremiah is telling us today, that's a way to get back to God. Amen. Our relationship needs to be fixed. Amen. We need to repent. Amen. We need to ask for what? Forgiveness of our sins. Amen. Not just for today. You can say, Lord, forgive me what I'm going to commit tomorrow. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Next it said, they reflected upon their what? Blessings. Lord have mercy. The people began to pray, Lord have mercy, and reflect on the blessings of God. They covered everything God had done from creation all the way up to the time they went in captivity. And when they brought them out of captivity, oh my God. Hallelujah. Verse 16 and 15 of that, it says that. He is God of creation, verse 6. Can I, let me tell you what it says. You, perver you preserved them. You chose Abraham to make a covenant with him. You saw the affliction of our fathers in Egypt. You heard the cry by the Red Sea. You showed signs and wonders against Pharaoh. Oh, my God. He, you divided the sea before them and their persecutors. Oh, man. They threw their enemies in the deep. Hallelujah. He was led by day with a cloud, a pillar, and by night with a pillar of fire. I'm getting excited. I'm getting excited. He said, you spoke with them from what? Heaven. You made your holy Sabbath. You brought them out. You brought water out of a rock. You told them to go in and possess the land. Oh, my God. His grace in verse 7. God who answered prayer in verse 9. He God of deliverance in verse 10 to 12. You got to read that chapter. He is God who supplies all the needs in verse 15. God is faithful to us even in our worst day, Pastor R.B. He is faithful. The faithfulness of God puts us in a deeper position. It is a position that the, the unbelievers will never have. But we're in a position right now because our God is faithful. He is a forgiving God. God's faithfulness is constantly. God's faithfulness is so much greater than our failures. Woo! It's greater. It's greater. God gives hope. He calls us to repentance. In this chapter, Nehemiah chapter 9, we are reminded of his mercy. We are reminded that he is great. We are reminded that he is mighty. We are reminded that he is what? Just. We are reminded that he is what? Kind. We are reminded that he is what? Patient. We are reminded that he is slow to anger. I don't want to preach, y'all, but I am happy in here. He is a God that's slow to what? Anger. He is good. Look what happened. The people prayed and confessed their sins. They reflected on the blessings of God. Oh, my God. When I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he done for me, my soul cry out, hallelujah. Look what the next outline says, Pastor R.V. They own up to their sinfulness. They own up to it. The people confess their sins. They repent in brokenness. They reflect on God's goodness. And then the people confess their sins and recognize their sinfulness. No self-deception. No excuses. No blame for others. No cover up. Lord have mercy. 
they own up to their own sin. <laughs> they didn't pass the buck, amen. In a beautiful wick, the scripture says this, they prayed a powerful confession. Right. Look what the writer says, for you have dealt faithfully. That's in verse 33. We have done what? Wickedness. The people took their sins to seriously to heart of the biblical confession. If we really want to see our sins as God sees it, confess it. Confess it. Wholehearted. And our lives will change. Let me conclude with this question. How are you going to deal with sin? They like pastors say, that's some shouting stuff. How are you going to deal with sin? After you done read the Sunday school lesson, have you read the Bible, have you come to worship, you heard what the pastor say about the word of God, how are you going to deal with sin? Lord Jesus, reset your thoughts and action. Let me ask this question. What are some specific ways you have made excuses or blame others for your sins. She made me do it. She tempted me. He tempted me. He had a nice suit on. He had a nice smile on his face. Who you gonna blame? Amen. Are you ready to own up your sin before God? Hallelujah. 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 Bless the name of the Lord. I hope you have got something out this lesson. I was blessed. Repentance. Repented in brokenness. Reflect on the blessings of the Lord. And own up to it. Own up to it. Own up to it. It's your charge. It's on you. It's on you. It's not on pastor. It's on you. It's on me. It's on you. Amen, amen. Bless God. Thank God for all those that are here today. We bless God for those that are listening by the broadcast. And we pray right now in the name of Jesus as I close with this prayer. Again, if this Bible class and ministry have a blessing to you, please drop us a line. Amen. Lost Street Baptist Church, 3132. Law Street, New Orleans, 70112. Seven. I'm sorry, y'all. I got caught up. Amen. Let us close with this prayer. Lord, I come to you just as I am. No more excuses. No more blaming. I look to your faithfulness and your mercy right now. Bring my sins with a broken heart. Totally honesty, asking you to forgive me. Turn my life in the direction you want me to go. That what I want more than anything, to stay close to you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.